Welcome to the Buy Box Bandits podcast. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Buy Box Bandits podcast. Today, we have a super special guest, our youngest ever guest, but also one of our largest sellers ever guest. We got the man Dylan from Sawyer Souls, over 10 million sales before age 18. Homie turned 18 yesterday, two years in the making, learned a lot from this guy the past couple of years. So thanks for joining us, man. Thank you so much for having me on, Miles. We've, I've been looking forward to this for a really long time. Cool. All right. For, so, for context, for, hold on. Before we get started, for context for the viewers, Miles and I have been talking about getting Sawyer on for probably a year a and a half. A year, year and a half. Yeah. yeah. And Miles yeah. always said, we got to wait till he's 18. We yeah, I mean, it makes it sound 18. weird when you say it like that. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so how, how the hell do you, uh, you know, do that type of scale and such? Take us back to the beginning, man. So it started off in 2017. Uh, I, I always liked shoes, like since I was like very young. And I saw that Yeezys were coming out like pretty inconsistently a few times a year. And every one of them that came out was selling for at least double the money. So the first release I ended up going for was the Blue Tent 350s. And I ended up getting like six pairs. And that completely changed the game for me. Made like a quick thousand off that. Um, and then since then, I, after that, I went started selling Supreme. I kind of got away from the shoes for a little bit, did Supreme. I would just go on my phone during uh, school days oh, and just go to the bathroom. There, get yeah. like one or oh two items yeah. a week, which isn't really scalable. And then I was talking to one of my friends and he was like, man, you did so much better on the shoes. You should go back to the shoes. And I was like, you're right. I'm dropping Supreme, going for only shoes. And I started scaling a lot, got into botting in like 2019, 2020. First, I did a little bit of in-store. I would just go hit the malls, do like order pickups for like all the release shoes and all that. But I really started to scale up when I got a uh, Amex and that was a big game changer for me. Immediately got like 70,000 spending power, which was like 10 times what I had before. And I got right into botting. Um, I bought some bots for myself, but honestly, I didn't really like running myself. It's too much expenses with like proxies, servers. It was just too much of a hassle. So I ended up just letting people run my cards and doing like 50, 50. And that's how I kind of scaled up my first big, large amount of capital. And it kind of prepared me for Amazon. I started Amazon in 2021, I believe in March. So I've been, I've been on Amazon for about two and a half years now. And I started doing like mostly Nike outlet stuff, just stuff I can find online for good prices. I did a lot in shoes, sold probably 70,000 pairs to date. So I did a lot of volume in the shoe game. And more recently, I started to do different categories, new products, started wholesale about nine months ago. Um, doing a lot more different categories like grocery, home and improvement, like all that type of stuff. And that kind of changed the game for me. I got out of shoes starting about eight months ago. Yeah, it was about December. Uh, just because of the high return rates. I had one of my employees go through my warehouse and kind of count how many return pairs I had because I didn't really have a clue how much I had. There's so much stuff like still in boxes. And he counted it and it was 1,100 pairs that were returned. And I was like, damn, that's a problem. Like I got to stop buying, focus on that sell all these return shoes and then I'll get back to buying. I ended up just not really buying too many shoes after that. Um, I focus more now on like clothing, accessories, all that type of stuff that doesn't have as high of a return rate. Also shoes got a lot more saturated in the past like year, year and a half, mainly the outlets. Like there's a couple models that I bought where like it was like 200 sellers per size. And I was like, damn, I got to switch it up a little bit because it was just getting to be a little bit too much for me to like it just stuff would be tanking but now started wholesale about eight months ago doing about 30 percent wholesale 70 percent oa and I'm, I'm really liking wholesale right now mainly got my accounts from trade shows so i went to my first trade show in january and it was called atlanta market didn't go that great but Crazy, i found man. one inspired Sirtak mentioned that earlier today that's the first time i ever heard of that and i've heard it twice in the same day yeah, wow. yeah it's actually funny that's interesting because I honestly have a tough time there. Like there's not a lot of stuff for Amazon people. 99% of the stuff is either already has a couple sellers, it's sold by Amazon, or the brand just does not want to deal with Amazon at all. So I've only found like two accounts from there. But my mom went there for like 20 years. She has a gift shop here in Savannah. So she kind of got me in with that. And 
the most recent trade show I've been to was ASD in March, and I will be going again in four or five days. Okay. I found a couple of good accounts from there as well. And then I found one good account from just doing cold calls, which I don't like doing very much, but I know. Well, who does? Who, who it works, yeah. Though. yeah, it works, man. <laughs> It really does work when you put in the time, but I have my VA working on a huge list of brands and I'm going to be getting the calling uh, very soon. So before we get too tactical, I mean, obviously a lot to unpack there. Before we get too tactical into different aspects that you touched, mm -hmm. what's it like, man, to be a high, well, a, a previous high school student having the sort of success and, and doing the sorts of things that most high school students have, have no idea what it's like? Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy, man. Everything kind of blew up during COVID. My school kind of had no idea what to do during COVID. So it was only like an hour worth of class a day. So I was just focusing on new releases. And once 2021 rolled around and people were getting back to school, the school tried to say like all people have to be in person. And I said, I cannot do that. So I switched to a virtual school and that's where I finished. And um, it just gave me so much more time to just work on the business. That That's really what changed the game for me. But it is a little bit weird just being very different from everyone. But I, I really enjoy what I do. And it's super fun doing Amazon and shoes and all that. Yeah. And you got a really good social circle with Amazon, too. And all three of us, you know, have really worked to curate that and yeah. such. I think um, from the outside looking in, I think you did something very, very similar to me in that you kind of created an echo chamber around kind of what you wanted. Right. Or at least like what you thought you wanted, like, um, you know, I mean, get curating your, your social media feeds and such to see what, you know, a lot of we consume a lot of similar content. I really kind of like, you know, normalize stuff and everything since like 2018, 2019, like a lot of the stuff I've consumed has been business oriented, progress oriented. And like, uh, you know, that's, that's fairly private to yourself in terms of like what are you watching? Like other people kind of don't really know or and don't really yeah. care. And as such, but that's what's nice about these days that we probably couldn't have done as easy 20, 30 years ago as being able to do that and 100%. everything and getting to know each other. And so I know um, right when you were getting going with Amazon in early 2021, um, like you and I were selling a lot of the same, those Air Force ones were crazy back then. We just like got talking about stuff. Um, like you had some like crazy numbers. Didn't you do like over 300K in Rev in May of 2021 alone? I believe I, it might've been like August, but I was definitely doing yeah. like, 200k by my second month so disgusting yeah into it really fast yeah like, and and you were i hate even to say lucky but i i really like to say it about myself being like we we yeah. liked selling stuff you had shoes right so to ch showed you the model i was like that's one of the biggest things i contribute to my success was having that and everything but tell the story about all the pools in the yard i think that's a fucking hilarious story yeah so during 2021 pools were popping off um and i still knew a lot of people who are in the botting industry and who had run my cards so i was said oh this pool has been restocking on walmart constantly please run my card on this and <laughs> i was in new york at the time so i was doing stuff like i was traveling wasn't really paying attention to my phone and this guy in one day got me like 250 pools that were going to come to my house and i had no place to and put they're them. heavy and they're big and yeah, and yeah 150 pound pools like no small intex pools they were massive and what we had to end up doing i refused delivery on like 100 because i just could not take them <laughs> <laughs> the rest we ended up just putting in the carport and on pallets outside and we put tarps over them and i would just slowly be shipping out merch anything for the bag out. anything for yeah. the bag it was pretty wild days, but I, I really many, missed a couple of days. <laughs> how many of those were you selling a day? Probably like 20 to 30. Yeah. It was, it was doing pretty good. And they and were over 100. Reach. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was over 150 pounds. I did a lot of uh, Walmart in-store pickup as well. I got a Sprinter around that time. I was just going to uh, bring up the Sprinter. Yeah, that was the first time I ever saw you. We had talked so much and I still had no idea what you looked like until you <laughs> dropped the, the Sprinter picture on, uh, on Twitter. Yeah. But that I was definitely have seen that picture. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, it's like, and you look so much different now too, even compared yeah. to uh, two years ago. I um, the caption like, it. other kids are getting BMWs, and I bought a Sprinter or so something like that, right? What was the caption? It is first, first car. whip, or yeah, first yeah. car, and then you got the yeah. Tesla, the Tesla after that, yeah. And yeah. so, tell us about your current operation, because I can't remember if you still have a warehouse or not. So I had a warehouse up until June 30th of this year. So I was in there for about a year and a half. It was 4,000 square feet. It was honestly a really nice warehouse, but it was just too expensive. Like I really prefer to just send everything to prep centers. Don't have to deal with the inventory. Don't have to oversee employees. 
And when you're paying sales tax on some of that stuff as well, you save a lot of money when you're just sending to prep centers and you don't even need to think about your inventory. Sure. So I assume you probably have several, one for OA, one for wholesale or two for OA? Yeah. So I send pretty much everything to Danny, my partner for the group, and Ooh. he does a really good job with everything. He's he's really great at what he does. And I'm, I'm really happy with that. Yeah, <laughs> dude, a lot of my, uh, a couple of my coaching guys that are like really Chad scaling fast, they're like dropping stuff off to him in New Jersey and stuff. It's hilarious. Yeah. They're like taking pictures of him and shit. Yeah. That's awesome. awesome. I think I saw that yesterday. Yeah, yeah, Max. <laughs> they're, they're smiling as they're listening to this too. That, that crew is great right there. Very <laughs> awkward. But I left it in because I knew it was going to come up right there. But yeah, sweet, man. Um, So in terms of kind of just like uh trending, um, like, revenue wise year over year, right? So like what was 2021 on Amazon, 2022? And then we're gonna kind of get tactical about stuff as well. Yeah, I believe 2021 was like two to 2.2 2 million. Uh, last year, 2022 was 3 million. And this year it's gonna be about 3.5. But next year I'm really looking to Chad scale, gonna be all prep centers, gonna be only focused on just finding new products. It's going to, it's going to be a really good year. My prediction is going to be 6 million for next year. So most of our viewership probably comes from the OA space. So we'll talk about a little OA and then we'll get into wholesale. Um, speaking of OA, the biggest bottleneck that for a lot of people are going to be cancellations, right? And a lot of people are going to hear the numbers that you're putting up and be like, oh, that's not possible. How is he getting orders through this and that and the other, right? So what can you share in terms of maybe specific tap tactics or techniques that you use to order the volume that you need to output the, the results that you want? Yeah, that's a great question. So off the bat, if some place like cancels every order that's above like 10, 15 quantity, like I think Shoe Carnival is one of them. There's a couple of sites like that. I immediately just stop buying and rule them off. But there's some like Dick's and a couple other websites where they'll cancel, you, cancel your orders only because of like they don't trust your payment method or something like that. So in that situation, first thing I do is try PayPal unless there's discounted gift cards for a good price, but I use gift cards as much as I possibly can. That really And how helps. much does that end up being? Like what percentage of orders? So I would say for OA stuff, probably like 30, 40%. Which is a ton then. So you like really got a good system on checking out on them quick or the VA is yeah. getting them quick or something like yeah, that. Cool. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It, it works really well. It makes a massive difference in your margin. Yeah. Too. So what, can you kind of explain that for people who might not be familiar? Yeah, so I only buy these gift cards on Top Cash Back. There's a lot of like sus gift card providers and stuff out there. I do not mess with that. I like Top Cash Back because you can buy however much you want. You can do the exact dollar amount you want. So let's say my order is $235.20. I can buy a gift card for exactly that amount so that there's no remaining balance. So that's a big game changer. So you don't have a bunch of leftover balances and stuff. That's like that. huge. Yeah. Really annoying. And uh, it also gets anywhere from like two to ten percent off on some of these websites, and it, it's really a game changer. Protects for against cancels. There's a lot yeah, of things. But I mean, even still, what's probably more valuable than the discount of the two or three percent off is is probably like Miles was talking about the extra security. Because I would even place gift cards over PayPal. As, I would as, put them over. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I from I like Dix's so perspective, if. I'm seeing someone check out with some random credit card or I'm seeing someone it's like a, like a cashier's check, right? It's certified money. You know, it's there, you know where it's coming from. It's a no brainer. Can't charge back on it. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, um, I still kind of see a lot of people who are like, kind, you know, I, I know it's a lot of you guys listening who are like, don't quite understand the gift card thing. Go and buy a $5 one on top cash back right now. And instantly you understand, cause it's going to make a difference for you guys. Right. Because a lot of you guys, that are struggling to source, it's not that you can't find quick selling products. It's insanely easy to do that, right? Just storefront stock and seller ramp, that kind of thing. Your issue is that you're not finding them properly, right? And discounted gift cards are a way to dig in to do that. And even if you are finding a lot of stuff properly, if you're using gift cards, it's going to boost your margins um, a little bit uh, too and everything. And uh, Garrett, I know you got some more, more gift card sauce. Yeah. So from like a, a bookkeeping perspective, how do you manage, say, if an order does get canceled or more probably inventory related cancellation or something gets, you know, misshipped or something like that? Is there a way that you can map back to a specific gift card? 
That's a good question. So every gift card I buy, I write it down immediately. I've only had it a couple times where it's a website that cancels. Recently, I tried to order on like Bass Pro Shop, like 20 units or something I will test buy. They pretty much immediately canceled it. So I do have some gift cards there where I'll probably just use it slowly over time and buy small quantity. But I think writing down all your gift cards is super important because some of these companies they don't have really the best like accounting systems. They might not refund your gift card. You need to be on top of those things where like if your order gets canceled and they don't reimburse you for that, you need to be able to have that written down and to be able to follow up with them. So I think that's really important. Sure. And then um, in terms of just like on the OA side of things, like, um, you know what I mean? Because I know you have, you know, people in your group and such. How do you think about OA source and like, what are mistakes you think people make? What are maybe some stuff you think you've done really well compared to most people and everything like that? Yeah, I think a pretty common mistake is just looking where everyone else is looking. And I would say the biggest mistake in OA is just buying products for too much money voluntarily. There's people who will pay three, four dollars sales tax on a pair of shoes instead of just shipping it to a prep center and saving that money to lower your cost immediately. Another same with the gift cards as well. If you're not using gift cards and tax exempt, like you're losing out. There's gonna be people who are getting it for four or five dollars cheaper and making money where you aren't making money. A lot of times that is the margin, right? I mean when we talk about manufacturing margin, every little bit counts and every Mm -hmm. little bit adds to the moat that you think is is fairly obvious, but we forget about like how small the social media space is everyone thinks prep centers and sales tax advantages are are obvious mechanisms Mm -hmm. but there's plenty of people i'm sure that don't know any about any of them that's very true yeah and i'll i'll like run into yeah all the time man like people have been doing it for a while and have like no idea how certain discounts work that are like we all kind of think you know our common odds which absolutely they're not you know just considering like you know how many people struggle with this stuff and uh, everything. So switching up to the wholesale side of things, can you kind of compare the pros and cons of the different models and kind of how you see wholesale fitting into your operation as you uh, incorporate it more and more? Yeah. So I like wholesale a lot. I still see myself doing OA for a long time. The one thing I would easy. say about wholesale, too yeah, it's so yeah, too easy. Like, yeah. wholesale is way more difficult than OA, in my opinion, like finding profitable suppliers, like being able to consistently have your products in stock, like lead times where you might have to pay and wait four to six weeks before you can get your inventory. There's a lot of cons with wholesale, but overall it's just a more scalable model. So I see myself probably being like next year, maybe like 60% wholesale, 40% OA. Uh, I really like OA when it comes to like Q4. I focus on a lot of seasonal products like decorations, chocolates, like so much stuff that a lot of people really aren't looking at. And a lot of that stuff, you have to buy it early before people really hop on there. Like right now I'm buying a lot of like cold weather clearance stuff that I'll be ready to sell in three to four months from now. But there's items that you will not be able to find for these prices when it comes to like December, December. So it's really important to load up early on inventory like that. It's funny the different perceptions because obviously, uh, depending on when this episode gets released, you've probably already heard of Surtex episode. And he was talking about, it might have been off camera, but he was talking about how wholesale to him is easy, but talking about gift cards and discount codes is like someone trying to solve world green. hunger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dry grass always greening. Um, <laughs> but let's, uh, let's kind of dig into the transition period from a completely OA-based business to not necessarily completely wholesale-based business, but maybe a hybrid of both, right? What does that look like? What's the next, what's the playbook for that? Maybe the next two months. Yeah. So when I started wholesale, I still, I I recommend this to everyone, keep your OA buys going, Mm -hmm. keep your replans going. There's no reason to cut off that old stuff. And uh, it's stuff that's working. You don't want to just get rid of it. So I'd say do the slams just transition slowly. I started with trade shows because it's just in person, really easy to meet people. Um, I think that's honestly the best way to find suppliers, especially if you're new and just kind of slowly adding on suppliers and products to your catalog, trying to replenish them as much as possible. I'm really big on replens now. I try and keep my products in stock for as long as possible, whether that's buying like 40 or 60 days worth of supply on good ROI flips or just to buy consistently. Like there's certain products that I buy literally every single day where there's like certain quantity limits on the website or whatever, like I can only grab 50 a day. I do it every single day. So it's really important to just keep that old stuff going and slowly add on to new accounts and new products. Yeah. And I, I like, it's important for people listening, right? Like you don't find a replen, like a replen becomes a replen. 
right? Yeah. Just off of product, circuit, you know, product becomes that replan. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like if you find good products, like naturally you're gonna have a shitload of stuff to buy, which is the goal. The goal, the goal is not to, you know, necessarily have products you can rebuy, it's to have a lot of products to buy, right? Which is a skill thing. And then naturally you have products you can rebuy, which is a byproduct yeah. that which grows the business naturally. Like there's only two ways to grow, like two ways that work in tandem, right? You can either buy more new products or buy more of your existing products, right? Or necessarily sell more new products or sell more of your existing products, right? Grow your catalog and uh, such, right? And they just feed off each other, right? And uh, and everything, I think that really uh, puts it together. So um, in terms of just like, especially like having your own warehouse and stuff, like, do you think that makes sense for uh, some people? Because a lot of people like kind of glorified, a lot of people also hate it. Garrett and I have had multiple warehouses and yeah. such. I will never touch a product ever again. <laughs> That's my mindset as well. I honestly... <laughs> Don't recommend warehouses to anyone who's doing OA, like pretty much anyone who's doing OA, unless you're in like a Delaware or New Hampshire. Oh, dude, the margin's state. crazy if you can do that yeah. in-house sales time. Yeah, uh, but other than that, man, like there's no reason to do a warehouse if you're doing mainly OA. And even in wholesale, like I'd say like maybe once you're in like the 10 to 15 reven- million in revenue per well, year. Well, it depends like, your average sale price. That's the big thing. That's, that's true. Yeah. So I, I, you really don't look for small and light products or very much stuff like that. Well, you that. can't. Yeah, you well, it's not really. Po- it has to be a yeah. crazy margin yeah. to make it feasible with Prep Center. Yeah. Another thing I want to touch on with the replens, uh, making a spreadsheet with everything you buy was a cool oh, yeah. game changer for me. That oh, dumped yeah. my replens overnight. And now I have logs from all the way to August last year where I can see, oh, I was buying this product at this time. Let's see if it's still there or new products that I might have not seen before. Like there's so much value with a spreadsheet to just keep track of everything. Well, I think I think also the big opportunity there and people I think are kind of blind to it is the sort of replenishable nature of a lot of the seasonal products. And mm-hmm. so it makes so much sense and it's so valuable to simply document any and all maybe Halloween products, Thanksgiving, Easter products that you bought, right? Because chances are, time after time, season after season. And we see it a lot across all the seasonal products that we've dealt with. Each and every season, same sort of thing happens. Sales rank drops to about the same point. Uh, price goes up to the same point. Granted, offers are probably increasing each season, but you can pretty much depend on what is going to happen. Yeah. And if you have that information, well, why double? Why do the double work? I mean, you might as well just take advantage of the work you've already done. Exactly. 100%. So continuing to get tactical with the wholesale piece, in terms of the actual qualification of different accounts, what does that look like? Should the new sell, the OA seller look in a transition, be looking at distribution accounts, brand accounts? What's your perception on that? I would say it's easier to get distribution accounts. It's been definitely easier, proven easier. But um, it's still worth it to reach out to brands and all that. For qualifications, honestly, you don't really need much. Like if you're shipping to a prep center, you can just say that's your warehouse. Um, really, all you need is an LLC, a few thousand dollars. And you're ready to go. But I still recommend OA for uh, new sellers just because there's so much more safety. You can return your items and cancel your orders before they get shipped out. If a listing gets deleted in wholesale, you're kind of fucked. But uh, (laughs) in OA, there's a lot of things you can do to kind of get your money back. It's much quicker too. You can turn it on a lot quicker. You can do like a... We were talking, uh, you know, the other day with Chris Grant. He was talking about picking up products, retail arbitrage, flipping them same day online pickup boards. There's a lot of flexibility you don't get with wholesale that you, that you can get with arbitrage because you were doing a ton of retail arbitrage with outlets. What yeah. do you do, right? And then you do, you know, we were doing a lot of OA. I remember we we were uh, jamming like Academy 10% code, all that shit back in the day. And like, I'm still using that like these days. Yeah. And it's crazy. Yeah. Like stuff we found two years ago. Still selling. It's crazy. Yeah. And then all the Legos, remember all the Lego, all the FaceTimes over the Lego stuff. And dude, that's the thing. We still haven't even met in person. We've been, we've been making money together for like two and a half years and we're, we're meeting in person in Couple three days. days, right? Yeah. Now. Three in days. Vegas, right? Yeah. What, what's Vegas like, man? I, for people who maybe haven't been to ASD yet, cause there's a lot of people listening that are going. Yes. I, I was kind of surprised. There's oh, so- you're going to get recognized there too, based off this. Did you get recognized oh, in March? A couple times. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. So definitely. Lot. Well, this time. Yay. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> 
but it's it's a lot of people there. There's tons of Amazon sellers. You kind of just have to differentiate yourself, whether that's being high amount of sales or just providing value to like the brand or distributor. A lot of the really good distributors that I still work with today, I, first time I met them, they asked a couple of people around me, like, how much do you do in sales yearly? They'll say like 500K and he'll be like, sorry, we can't work with new people unless you're doing <laughs> <That's>, They <laughs> had <laughs> <bro keys. laughs> no, they just get thousands of people pocket like, watch up to them. <laughs> and then and Sawyer just drops the hammer bro <laughs> well i mean yeah that's what's nice though is that like i'm sure the nice part is that that's is very attainable to then go and follow up and get that account you know what i mean like wouldn't yeah. scare people like, and such yeah being young was also a really big advantage there like it opened up a lot of conversations with people who might not have really talked to me very yeah, much I mean, it's an icebreaker for sure definitely 100 percent. they're all like wow you're so young like we, we could definitely open an account for you Let's like do it oh. man yes yeah, swipe the amex baby swipe the amex <laughs> yeah, send, them, send, them, send, them, send the product my way man <laughs> so kind of kind of taking a step back full circle right we've talked about a lot in terms of oa and wholesale what and from my understanding obviously miles has told me a lot about you what is your parents kind of what is their perception been this whole experience this whole journey They've been very supportive the whole way. They help with a lot of stuff in the business, like especially like when I was first getting set up with like the LLC and like helping me get credit cards, certain things like that. At first, they were definitely a little bit skeptical, like when I was running <laughs> yeah, on cool. the props and stuff. But once I kind of proved to them like consistent profits and just like kept on scaling, they were 100% on board with everything. Yeah, I think I've been like super lucky. My parents are the exact same way, basically. Like, especially my mom, like, was always kind of just cool with stuff. Like, I, I don't know whether it's like she trusted that I would figure it out or she liked that I was doing stuff. Yeah, either one, right? It did end up, you know, working out. And well, you also, you also come from a family history of of business owners, entrepreneurs. Yeah, that's true. Especially on my mom's side. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They're, yeah, they're, it's their, it's her parents that established the that began the empire the long well, empire. Yeah, okay <laughs> well yeah i mean you are right though in that regard yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh and everything yeah i think we're like super lucky with that but there was like a ton of people that were you know doing shoes back in the day and then uh, you know quitting um you know not really making anything of it and uh such i think it's kind of sad right there but they like you just didn't innovate right because it's kind of crazy that the shoe market did actually kind of die I mean, oh. not not on Amazon, but um on like uh you know hype shoes and such for anyone curious. Yeah, I, I noticed it in 2021 when I started to see like all these easy drops where you're only making 10, 15 bucks a pair when you're selling to like the best of the best bulk buyers. I kind of knew right then, like I gotta get out of this as quick as possible. Then a couple of friends came to me with the Amazon ungate for like 7500 We split it like six ways. It was like a thousand dollars to just say, order That's 10 cards on East Bay. <laughs> like that literally That's probably some of the best money you ever spend, honestly. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But it's funny how like nobody cares about like gatekeeping that information anymore. It's so easy now to get ungated pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Dude, um, I was joking about I remember the time and place when I got the approved for Nike email like two and a half years ago, three years ago. It was mid COVID. I remember the exact time and place. Like, where holy I shit. I can't believe this actually worked right there. I'd say the best, the best money I've ever spent in my entire life, bar none, not even close is the 500 bucks of the kid who scammed me, who introduced me to the sneaker Facebook groups in 2014. Not even close to the best money <laughs> I ever spent. It, it sucked at the time, but it was by far the best money I ever spent. Not, yeah. not even close right there. And like, dude, even like some of the best, like some of the, some of like the happiest I've been was like those initial sales days, like, um, yeah. you know, back to school two years ago, right? When you really start getting momentum, because think like the happiness comes from the progress mm -hmm. on stuff, you know what I mean? And now that we're working on bigger progress, bigger projects, it takes longer to see project, you know, progress right, move yeah, out yeah. and something that's interesting how it kind of like changes your brain. Talk about the Black Friday 2021. This is another lit uh Dylan Sawyer milestone as well. Oh, this is crazy. So um I was loaded up on inventory at a time. This is my first time doing FBM and I had listed like a thousand pairs of shoes that had crazy volume as a pair of Converse. I sold like 800 of those in a day and I sold a bunch of other stuff FBA. I ended up doing 75,000 in a day, which is crazy. <laughs> crazy i remember was, yeah because it was that black friday it was it was that it was the day yeah, of black, i think it was 2021 it was. definitely sure yeah black friday 20 because i remember i was um i was like driving around i think i was picking up some ra stuff or something like that and you were texting me you're like dude i'm already at 20 pick i was like holy shit i'm like at eight like thinking i'm doing something and because like that dude we were that was our first year man you'd like that's disgusting bread 73k oh. like 20 and that stuff was super high margin uh especially then too so it was like probably like you know 
I don't know, like 17 G's of profit or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, definitely. One crazy. thing I learned though. What I, what I love the best too is like, dude, I almost lost my account like four times during that, during that FBM season. <laughs> like, <laughs> like just thinking like, I, I don't know, but like there's so many things. I know you had some serious account health issues too. Yeah. With, uh, so with, what ended up happening like, was one of my employees like mixed up because the shoe, it was just two different colors and the SKU number is like one number off. And a bunch of shoes were mixed up with the other color. Oh. I had to cancel like 150 pairs. Like it was bad. <laughs> but I ended up being okay with that. And one thing I learned on that day, I sold all that stuff too early. I could have waited two weeks and made maybe 25, 30K in profit. So that's one thing I kind of applied to the next year. Maybe I didn't do as much in sales on Black Friday, but I spaced it out and I ended up making more money. Yeah. And if you're new, I wouldn't worry about that. I would worry about just moving it. And then, you know, the nice thing is a lot of inventory is going to be, you can buy more, especially that time. Right. Cause what, what people trip on with Q4 man is like, they think you buy like the best buy costs for Q4 in October. No, the best buy costs for Q4 are the day before you sell it, when you buy it on cyber Monday and sell it the next day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By far, that's like the best time to get in. Cause you're buying shit cheaper than it ever is selling it faster and for higher prices right there. So it's like, uh, I mean, I could rant about that all day, but like by far the best way to make money is purely uh, if you're new, right? Where you're not super confident stuff, right? Is, is buying Black Friday, buying Cyber Monday, FBM and immediately when it arrives. Because a lot of those sales keep going, right? They mm -hmm. lie. Like a lot of those sales go to like December 5th, especially even some of the best ones. Yeah, so, and they'll start early sometimes too. So it gives you more time to like send in the FBA and all that. Yeah, especially in honor. Of, um, yeah, you got it, G. In honor of uh, today, would you uh, care to share what your biggest Rakuten check was? Oh, yeah. Let's see. Honestly, it's not going to be that big. I, I've used Top Cash back more than Rakuten over the years, but it's still going to be a good amount. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be big. It, I let's see. I missed that from being wholesale. Now I missed the Rakuten payout it's quarterly. That's a good tweet. Yeah. Too. Uh, yeah, I have it loaded <laughs> up right here. Tweet. Yeah. Oh no way! Really? Yeah. Oh, so you had that plan to say that that wasn't off the dome. Yeah, correct. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Makes it like not as good, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I had seen a tweet come through. Um, <laughs> checking. Miles, what was your payout today? Uh, well, I don't get it anymore, dude. Remember, they took the 14K from me in oh. May. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mine's kind of disappointing. It's 6,000. I expected it to be more. Oh, oh. So you've like been what? And top I, cash back pays out differently too. So it's not like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I've, I, I've had 30,000 though all time. So it's been like consistent. Like, yeah, four, that's about, I think years. mine's like 40, 40,000 lifetime. I remember I found it in a, uh, in my November. top cash back might be 40. So it's probably 70 combined, but I've got a lot more from credit card points. Credit so. card. Yeah. It's like over a hundred K it's crazy. Yeah. I think my lifetime credit card is probably like 60 or 70 K too. Cause I used to I got, work like bonuses and stuff too. Yeah. When I found out about, um, cashing out Amex points through Charles Schwab, that first time I did it, I got like 25,000. That was crazy. <laughs> Just slinging around money yeah. with, that, with everything. I'm curious. Cause like, I feel like you know, you had, I mean, obviously like just as good at first, would you do anything differently or would you, if you could go back or would you do it the same thing? Cause it just worked out really well. It's like an interesting mental frame. That's a good question. Yeah. So I would do pretty much everything the same, maybe get out of shoes a little bit earlier, but it was, it was good margins while I was doing it. And it and matched the timing. Big, yeah. yeah. The biggest mistake though I've made was getting the warehouse hundred percent. If I just sent Same. all Centers, I would have made more money. Like it's crazy to think about putting all that time, effort. It was a really nice space, but I would have made more money if I. How much was that? Because four thousand square foot's huge. Yeah, it was like forty two hundred a month, and then like utilities eight hundred, nine hundred. Oh, Employees geez. could be five to seven thousand a month. You know. It, yeah, it's so it's lot. heavy. Yeah, you learn a lot though. You know what I mean, and especially yeah. like management and stuff like and that. And she had some good memories in there, like Miles and I had. Granted, I would change it. I would go back and not do the warehouse, but we had yeah. such good times. That me too. Time, it was the times awesome. Danny sped. <laughs> anyway, oh, oh, the couple tickets. Um, as we wrap up here, if you one of your one of your best friends went to right asking for advice, how to get started with Amazon, what would you tell them, and what is the next like call it? three to four months look like tactically? That's a good question. Yeah, so I'll help them get set up. I, I like to start with the simple brands. Nike is my favorite brand to sell still. It's just really mm -hmm. easy to find profitable inventory. Um, I, I honestly recommend RA at first. Like just go into the outlet, scanning every single product in there. You'll get a good idea mm -hmm. on what's selling, what's not selling. Um, 
how much to pay for the items that are selling. So when you get onto OA, you might see a shoe that you saw in the outlet and be like, oh, this is cheaper. I could probably buy this for a profitable price. Um, another thing is pay, pay for coaching, pay for mentorship, like learn yeah. from people who have done millions in sales and are successful and have proven that. That's probably, probably the biggest thing. Because yeah. if you just do trial and error and try and figure out yourself, it's going to take you a lot longer and you'll make more money in the long term by just paying for that coaching or course. Yeah, either that or go hardcore on social media documentation, Discord, talk to everyone you can, or ideally both yeah. right yeah. there. Because that. Ideally. You got yeah, it. the first one didn't really exist when we were getting into it, but the but we really grinded on like the the Twitter. So like I probably it's like Twitter DMs for you like my first couple of weeks and such because we were we were messing around on that. Their Air Force listing was moving at the moon, and we were fighting the Chinese sellers that were yeah. buying. Oh, I remember shit. That, oh my yeah. gosh, man! Right there, <laughs> cool. Well, sounds good, dude. Glad we could uh, finally get in. A uh, you know good first episode here. Where can people find you online? Uh, Sawyer Souls on Twitter. I have a group, uh, FBA, FBA. AIO. Yes, sir. So both like of that. those accounts to follow. I'm not really active on Instagram, but Sawyer Souls on Twitter. Uh, go follow me on there. If you have any questions, shoot me a DM. I'm gonna open uh, up. What's it? It's Tesla Chicken Wing. <laughs> yeah. Cake, <laughs> professional uh, money spender. Professional money spender. Food and music enthusiast. Okay, not chicken wings <laughs> anymore. You don't like chicken wings. I anymore. think I changed. No, I do love chicken wings. You so. love chicken. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool all right sounds good thanks everyone for listening we'll see you guys in the next one thanks a lot for coming on sorry thank you thank you for having me on guys it was awesome cool.